Here at the Chicago Botanic Garden, Dr. Jim Alt has developed and introduced many plants, including a series of cone flowers, orange, mango, and pixie meadowbright. Jim works with the plants that are native to the Midwest and are adapted to this environment, so they add new color forms to a primarily native garden. We talked to him about some of the cone flowers he is looking to introduce in the next few years and how he goes about the breeding process. These are 2007 crosses. Um, the first year cone flowers may only be a, a basal rosette of foliage or they may produce two or three flowers, just to give you a hint. Uh -huh. But you really need to wait to the following year to get an idea of the habit. And so here we are uh, in 2009. So uh -huh. this is one of the plants that we selected. And the second one in, uh, the flowers are very similar to my earlier release of Pixie, but it's actually a taller plant. Mm -hmm. We can talk briefly about the oh, breeding yes. process itself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, echinacea are s fairly self-incompatible, so they won't self-pollinate or they'll self-pollinate to a very low level, maybe 5% uh -huh. of the seed or so. Oh, okay. But as we can just see here, we've got honeybees, native bees, we'll see uh, various butterflies and skippers. There's a, a plethora of pollinators uh -huh. on uh, cone flowers. And it's interesting, even all these hybrid cone flowers, they recognize them still as a food source. And so we'll see nectar collecting, we'll see pollen collecting. Uh -huh. And in fact, it's a real challenge breeding on these plants because they steal the pollen away as fast as it's being produced. Uh -huh. So what I'll do is bag a flower, uh -huh. and I'll pull a flower or a bag off here. Attempt two. This is a pollination bag not just junk blowing through the garden. Right. And so if you look close, you can see it actually has a lot of small holes in it. Oh, yes. And I'll do that. Uh -huh. And so uh, it allows it to breathe. The holes uh -huh. are small enough yeah. that pollen doesn't really go through it, but uh -huh. no insects get through there. It breathes so it doesn't get too hot. And so we selected a couple of flowers, bagged them. And, so uh, then are those, they've been pollinated? They've then? been pollinated. Uh -huh. uh, the disc on a cone flower this of course is actually not a single flower but it's a composite of all sorts of flowers and so what right. a lot of people call rays of course are our are, are ray our petals are ray flowers those yeah. are sterile uh -huh. uh, any one of the small florets in the middle will make seed and typically one whorl of flowers will open each day so one of these entire heads might take one spiral one, one? It, it's, it's a whorl right. around it and so oh, you okay. see on this one those are the stigmas actually uh -huh. So these are getting to the end. Um, you can see on that head, there's pollen being produced on one circle of flowers. And then two-day-old flowers are these ones oh, back wow. here, the stigmas. And so yeah. those are showing pollen now. Tomorrow will basically look like that. Uh -huh. yep. So then you will collect that seed and start it in the greenhouse? Yeah, uh, typically sow it uh, February. Uh, uh -huh. We'll stratify the seed for a month or two, give it a cold, moist treatment uh -huh. into the greenhouses. Um, February into March, plants will go out sometime uh -huh. next summer, uh -huh. and then by the following summer. So this cross will go in the ground 2010 and 2011. I should be standing out here looking at the results of that uh -huh. cross.